alternative dig talk real issues real talk fellow citizens following the sequence of events uganda seems to be at political crossroads <laughs> I'm not a servant of anybody. <laughs> Madam, I know the law. <laughs> As such, Alternative Digital brings you the Interfest show with retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Vesuje. Let's keep on the same page on Alternative Digital. As he gives you the alternatives on the transition question, rule of law, human rights and freedom, youth inclusion in governance, economic stagnation as he confirms i'll be always here saturday from 10 a.m in the morning be there don't miss the live discussion on the alternative uganda digital tv facebook pages and the alternative uganda youtube channel Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Our viewers, good morning. My name is Norman Tumhimbisen, and I'm sitting here to share uh, with Justice Kanyahamba. A lot of topical discussions as they made headlines uh, the previous week, every around this time on Wednesday, we are privileged to have him to share with the rest of us and the whole world about what either made news for him, appointed or disappointed him. It's a Wednesday, we are streaming live on our social media uh, pages, that's of course the, on our Facebook page, that's the Church of Uganda, and also Digital TV. And later on, the very show will be uh, on our YouTube channel, the Atlantic Uganda. I will ask Justice Kenny Hamba to say hello to our viewers and then we can proceed. Hey, hello, viewers. I'm very pleased to be with you once again. I hope you had a nice week. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, Justice Kenny Hamba, we're planning to we shall digest, uh, digest, dissect, and then digest most of the things that we, we, we shall either uh, write to him or what he will find necessary to share with us. Uh, your friend was laid to rest, that's Kate uh, Mohakanizi. Uh, and maybe for me, uh, on a lighter moment, is to ask you on whether you are convinced with the medical and health system here in Uganda. Because most of the big wings are always flown <laughs> abroad for treatment and the rest. What, is, where, what does that indicate? Where does it live well, a local citizen? It uh, doesn't give us any comfort. That many of them were taken abroad suddenly and in Nairobi, suffering from different diseases, we only receive them in boxes. It doesn't go well for our decision to take them suddenly out of Uganda. I have written a small book called The Medical Profession in Uganda. It is one of the best in the world. It has the personnel, technique, but they are often starved of facilitation. My view is that we should review seriously the decisions that force us to take our VIP secret persons to doctors who may be very good, whose facilities may be excellent, but they know very little about the background of those sick persons and when you go in emergency either you are unable to explain yourself many of the decisions taken by those 
foreign expert are based on guesswork. Whereas if you died in Uganda, for example, I've been fooled by doctors since I retired. Ten years. Local they, doctors. Local doctors. They know me inside out. Than a foreign doctor would. Yes. And uh, normally if something goes wrong with me, I just call one of them. And he says, Professor, tell your driver to go and get you this medicine. Take it this way. But if I were to take it to Nairobi, where they don't know me, but the stranger doesn't even know that I, I am diabetic, he doesn't know I have high blood pressure, then gives me medicine of the basis that I have either a cancer or another disease. You can't blame him. Because he's simply guessing. So, only recently, we have lost many of my friends. Eric Mwine, when he got very sick, they rushed him to hospital in Nairobi. I, I'm sure those doctors are excellent. But they didn't know his wrong program or illness. So just treated him for what they saw when he arrived there. And all, all we know, it could have been the wrong medicine. Many times, they have given me medicine. And he has reacted against my body. To such extent that one time, one day doctor prescribed it. An expert, when I told the other experts, said, no, that medicine will work very wrongly on your diabetes. Throw it away. He was so scared that that medicine was the wrong one. And they should, he didn't say keep it. He said throw it away. When you take a patient from Uganda, whether it be the governor of Bank of Uganda, General Eritomini, or Permanent Secretary McKenzie, they meet their doctors for the first time. Those experts don't know their background. I once went to a doctor abroad who described medicine that reacted by everybody with the medicine I was taking. So we had to ask Uganda, Dr. Bahendeka, who was my regular doctor here, he said, they ran from the UK. We have your patient here, Kanyamba and he's suffering from this. He said, don't give him that medicine. He will collapse and die. Imagine if you had taken it. I, will, I wouldn't be here talking to you. Why? The doctors are human. They are brilliant. They are, but if they don't know some, your illness, another one. So everywhere, I used to go for medication in the UK. They would write there, caution, this patient is diabetic. Uh, so when you're treating them or prescribing medicine, you, you, you already know that this person is... The absolute. So that is in many Uganda cases. So does that Especially of VIP. They don't know what is. What are the effects of giving you new medicine? They just put it on the bed, give it to you. I am not saying these doctors are guilty, <laughs> but often the effects of medicine are worse than disease itself. Yeah. And then I, unless you know that, you're innocent to prescribe it, 
and the result are catastrophic. So is it, could it be, is it a governance question that, were, that the, health, uh, the health system here isn't equipped and therefore it would be ideal that people be treated here because we have the... I entirely agree. All those people who have gone before me, Dr. Yamdisha, Justice O'Dev, just say Koko. Now very recently, just Museni. Mm. We are either Kukuru. older Kukuru. than me. Mm. I am still alone. And it is because my doctors know what is wrong with me. They know your history. So else. And that's why I'm still alive. So oh. this rush mm. is the best hospital in Nairobi. It may be. But does the doctor know what the patient is suffering from? I heard from a friend mm -hmm. that there is some senior minister here who went to one of the hospitals in, in Uganda and he had, he, okay, he has a problem with his leg. So the very hospital recommended some Ugandan doctors, professional and, and, and uh, experienced. And uh, you know that uh, Bushman, <laughs> that, that general, that big man said, no, 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 no. I am here that you recommend a foreign hospital. I cannot be treated by Ugandans. So they secured him that big hospital abroad. He flew and went to that hospital in some country. The people that we are supposed to work on him, they are the very doctors he had <laughs> refused when he was here. But then he was like, but I refused this very doctor. And then they said, no, this is one of our best. So he had to leave Uganda. One well, no, well, of well, So you imagine. Is one who knows is not the one who knows how to treat a patient. Mm. Is not the one who knows how to give good medicine. Is the one who knows the patient better no, as okay. a person who is sick. That is the best doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, I have nurses here at, uh, at Nakaseo who are excellently looking after me. Mm. If you give me a foreign doctor who is five, six degrees mm. in medicine. Mm. And they gave me my nursing mm. sister here who does not have one degree. I will choose my sister here. Because she my, understands you. Because he knows the problem. Currently my nurses know what mm. medicine to give me. How do you take, take me to so an expert in <laughs> India mm. or in Germany? Mm. However brilliant they may be, they lack that when they don't know with them. the history of my illness. You are just sending me for two days. Okay. So I hope some people are listening to me. Mm. I hope some VIP are listening to me. Please, don't just look at an expert. Look at his history with you, with your patient. Mm. Oh. That is most important. Not the medicine, mm. not the qualifications, but the knowledge okay. inside the knowledge of the patient. Okay. Thank you. We are moving forward with Justice Kanyahamba. I do. I maybe. Yeah, that was on a light on a, on a light uh, uh, note. I want to ask you: Is there anything that has made the news for you in the previous days, ever since we met last Wednesday? Yes. <laughs> And I hope it's this time you will ask the, the people to comment on it in our next meeting. You remember when we petitioned the Constitutional Court against three descendants who were the Attorney General of Uganda, NRM. the NRM party. And the president seven. President seven very wisely withdrew mm. when he saw our petition. Mm. And uh, it is on record, it is a newspaper. I am no longer interested in the right to bail. Mm. I leave the matter to court and at their discretion. Mm. Then somebody, certainly not on seven, seem to have bribed or compromised 
the judges of the Supreme of the Court of Appeal, who were headed by Justice a Golden Tende, Justice Musoke, Elizabeth, and Justice Monica. Uh, I have lost the name. Uh, forget me. Was even, um, I think my drama also was part of that. That's right. So they were promised by somebody. That's where I went to the Judicial Service Commission. And they say, no, we didn't promise them anything. But whoever is promised them, that if you say Museveni has won and has defeated the Kanyamba, we shall make you, you will be promoted to the Supreme Court of Uganda. Elizabeth Musoka, Monica Mugini, that's her name. And the younger man from Kigezi were immediately promoted. On that promise, <laughs> obviously, since I went and saw the judicial service, not as the recommendation of the judicial service commission. Because they na yesterday I visited him mm. in anticipation of this question today. And they say they know nothing about who promoted uh, Monica Mugeni, who wrote the read judgment in that case. They don't know who promoted uh, Everybody seems okay. Or the younger man from Kigezi. But they were all short promoted to the Supreme Court to become judges of the Supreme Court. Then they made a mistake, those judges. Instead of waiting while, until we submitted, they made, they made and signed their judgment. On the 22nd, 22nd of January, last year, before we had made the submissions, even before we petitioned us, uh, Mr. Wabamunu and the Kanyihamba, the others had run away. Paid off by the NLM or some people you don't know, and not only abandoned our petition, so we remained only two. Museveni, the respondent, also pulled out. And you saw in my first coming book me praising Museveni for being a good statesman and the president who loves his country. That was before they gave judgment. And when they turned and they have his colleague, the Musoke, who now he has been promoted to the Supreme Court, knew that the Museveni had withdrawn from that petition. But went ahead to yes. rule. But they went to rule that the way was no longer a party, he had won. <laughs> So what makes now news? Now, what makes it news? Read yesterday's new vision. One of those uh, uh, ministers, the Mabati, Mabati yeah, <laughs> who is accused of stealing Mabati. In fact, two of them have been granted the bank. Two of them have been given a bank. If they were following seven one, it wouldn't be granted to them. Mm -hmm. So they have gra been granted only the submission of Kanyihamba and the mm -hmm. The judge followed us and believed that our petition should win. That's why he granted bail to those two ministers. To those two ministers. Mm -hmm. And in Gondantende, the other compromised judges 
including the all the religious leaders of Uganda Kazinda, Grand uh, Mufiti, and uh, the Archbishop, of, the leader of the Catholics in Uganda, are silent, have not responded to my letter challenging them. That is Museveni, President Museveni, above the law and above God. Please, I had wanted you to ask them, but I know you are busy. Please find the time on your program and ask those three, the novelty of much in the division and the younger bishop of Mbarala have publicly denounced church judgment as a satanic. Secondly, the Uganda Law Society president, I hope he's listening to us, uh, Orundo, has denounced the judgment. In denouncing it, he said he wanted to come and see me to discuss it with the whole of the law society members. That one, I go to them food. My people cook them food. And they told me what wine they drink. I bought it. They never came. The president of the society never kept his promise. And as I speak now, he has never answered. Sir. One other person I had wanted you to ask, but you haven't had time, is Dr. The, 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 the Deputy Minister of Lands. Mayanja. Mayanja. I am sending him a bill to refund me 15 million shillings. Where he said all the reporters should come here. Every journalist came here. I even gave you the statement he made mm. with a promise that you will have, have fine to read it in alternative digital. Have you had that time? To read Mayanja's statement saying if somebody grabs your land, mm. you don't have to petition court. You do help self yourself. Help principal, mm. And he was like going to take me there. So he actually demolishes in my presence. Now so you ask him and the please next time let's not discuss anything. Until you have the answer, having interviewed that man. Now, in line with bail, mm. uh, some of the viewers were wondering why the junior minister, that's Nandutu, was referred to High Court for both trial and bail application, and yet her boss, the minister, the full minister, was uh, granted bail from the magistrate's court on whether the magistrate was trying to follow that they should, should that they, that, like the magistrate's court does not have the jurisdiction, most likely because the iron sheets that they allege now not to have taken are beyond 50 million. But then one wonders, if that is the law the magistrate was applying, why did they try and grant bail rather to the senior minister? Thank you very much for that very pertinent question. I have answered every question on this program, in my writings, that unless the kind of system we are being governed under is removed forever from Uganda, the justice, the rule of law, will remain in a Uh, illegal, comma, 
just like a patient is in a intensive care. There is no justice whatsoever to deal with speak. There is no rule of law. Mm. But Museveni has begun, that's why I'm thanking him, mm. has begun to wake up. Mm. Because he has always been fed by the lies of his ministers. Mm. And his attorney general. I have asked the attorney general, Chiwanuka. Why haven't you disciplined your colleague who is advising him? Mayanja is a doctor of laws, I assume, that it is wrong for anybody to declare a president of Uganda above God and above the law. Both Mayanja and uh, the other one are keeping quiet. He tells me when I call him that he is very easy in a coma in the hospital, medically. But every other day I saw him in newspapers making political comments. So please go there, send an emissary, to find out whether Dr. Mayanja is in a coma <laughs> medically. So that's where we have reached. The president withdraws from a very serious case. And the court of appeal, led by a sober man I know as a uh, uh, Tende, says Museven has won. When he's not there, he's not even a party. Now you ask him, Gwanda Tende, what do you see the High Court following Kanyamba's submission and the Wabamuno and the saying they are granting bail to a minister who is charged of stealing Mabati? How do you reconcile that? One in High Court, one in. Uh, one by you. You read the team saying it is Museveni who won. Therefore, anybody who is ch who applies bail automatically loses because Museveni won is the fight for granting bail to anybody. You understand? Why are Ugandan so quiet? Some of them, when I ask them, they hear me challenging the president. They think I am the one who is mad. Do you think I am mad? <laughs> oh, dear, dear. So, to me, if the NLM party cannot radically change its policy now, mm. they must leave. When we were fighting against Idi Amin, I moved the Archbishop of Canterbury the late Ronsi to come and pray for us and the prayer was broadcast worldwide and the one said my Lord God change the ways of Idi Amin and if he can't change please let him go I think you know where he wants him to go thank you Okay, we are with Justice Kanyab. I am afraid that the, the, the question I would want to give you now may go beyond the six minutes that we have for a break. I do not know whether I push it to you. And in the event that you don't conclude it, then it can come back after our break. Mm -hmm. And this is in particular in regard to the, to the, to the practice that you are against, that's uh, the homosexuality. You know the law was passed by parliament, and when it was, what was kind of confusing people is that the prime minister was in in the parliament when the law was passed and some other uh, useful cabinet ministers and to some people it was like to show that the government was not so much pro that law mm. because where are you expect a, a prime minister to be there and he's a, she's in later alone the attorney general is quoted for having advised the president not to sign the very bill 
Days later, the president invited the NRAM caucus to discuss the very bill after the law had been passed. Now the questions are here. Isn't that practice uh, a symptom that the president does not respect the independence of parliament, that parliament passes the law and he invites the NRM caucus to discuss what is already passed, rather than refusing to sign and he pushes back the law as the law requires him to <coughs> uh, I entirely agree with the questioner. He or she is absolutely right. Let me give you an example. In the case of 320 others versus Kanyamba, challenging among the members and Nzegi for having mismanaged and sold our bank, Kigiz Bank of Commerce. We are waiting for the judgment. We are 100% sure to win it. Why? Because when we filed our submissions, Mbabazi, Nzei, uh, and the Attorney General arrogantly refused to respond to our submissions, even though they were ordered to do so by the Constitutional Court. Chair at this time, not by Ngonda Ntende, but by the Chief Deputy Chief Justice, Butera, who, by the way, himself has privately denounced to me the judgment of Ngonda Ntende and five other judges of the Court of Appeal on bail. But he keeps mum quiet. He, he doesn't mention that privately. So has the president of the Uganda Law Society. He's so scared to say it is unlawful that he broke a promise to come here and his colleagues and they serve them lunch while we talk about it. You can ask him, a wound to say, why do you refuse to answer Kanyamba's numbers when you are the one who suggested, not suggested, but decided that you and your colleagues in the commission that were on the law society would visit him at his residence and you discuss these matters of bail. Please, no man. We can raise the issues, but unless at the next uh, program we start with answering the questions we have answered, we are not going very far. And provide alternatives, come here for answers, only, only answers to not them. Not only for them, you can say the first part, we shall answer right, the answers. Yes. Second part, we shall do exactly. The program that so brought us here. this law, is it Mr. Museveni compromising? So, I am saying, once a matter has reached Parliament, mm. and the Parliament has declared on it, like saying, we want Mr. President to revisit this matter. Parliament's decision must be answered by Museven in the Parliament, not in the caucus. Because he's represented, he has ministers, he has uh, prime Precisely. ministers. Precisely. has the attorney general. So, in any case. what I'm saying, for him to call the caucus, he can call the caucus for the purposes of advising him how to answer the question decided by Parliament. That he can do. But he cannot ask the caucus to answer that question themselves when the matter has already been passed by Parliament. It is the President. Because what he is doing 
is refusing to give assent yeah, to a true. bill passed by parliament. Mm -hmm. And that is a decision between him and the parliament. Not the caucus. Not the caucus. I once made a judgment which you people have been shy. When I say you people, not you personally. To, to cite. You should in the future to introduce me to, to our program. But this is the man who three times has defeated the president of the It's a defeat which I led judges and rather uh, I led lawyers lawyers like Gerard Kalwanga lawyers like uh, Warubidi lawyers, lawyers like uh, Ben Wacha I was their leader and the lead council and on three occasions, one of them they were not there. I have defeated President Museveni of Uganda, not of Kenya, not of Tanzania, but of the Republic of Uganda, the power of Africa. I have defeated. But the press, particularly those of Monitor, those of uh, New Vision, they keep silent. Ask him a question, uh, Norman, because I know you are brave. Ask them, why do you keep quiet when Kanyamba sings all over the world? He's not even arrested for saying he has defeated them seven. He's the only president in Africa if not in the whole world, who has defeated a sitting president, not a former, not a retiring, but a sitting president. Why hasn't he been serving? He openly used to denounce Kanyahamba that he spoils his politics. Why has he been also kept quiet? When Kanyahamba alleges publicly that he, Kanyihamba, George Wilson, has defeated Museveni acting as senior counsel. Okay. Mm -hmm. Our viewers, we are breaking. So, down. can That's we mm -hmm. finally get permission to you that the next week we shall get answers to that question? Okay. okay. Deliver that Museveni or his ministers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, okay. That is a promise we are making, Answers. and the answer will be next week. Uh, yes, we are breaking short today for a few seconds and coming back. Uh, of course, when we come back, there are so many other concerns we want Justice Kanyamba to address. Yeah, and then we shall share from his cup of wisdom. Thank you. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Fellow citizens, following the sequence of events, Uganda seems to be at political crossroads. I'm not a servant of anybody. <laughs> Madam, I know the law. <laughs> As such, Alternative Digital brings you the Interfest show with retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Vesuje. Let's keep on the same page on Alternative Digital. As he gives you the alternatives on the transition question, rule of law, human rights and freedom, youth inclusion in governance, economic stagnation, as he confirms. I'll be always here Saturday from 10 a.m in the morning be there don't miss the live discussion on the alternative uganda digital tv facebook pages 
and the Alternative Uganda YouTube channel. The Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. So your, your patients, we are back again, and we continue to dissect some of the topical discussion uh, here with Justice Kanyahamba, and of course ranging from human rights, governance, politics, I mean economics, legal, to mention but a few. I want to, Justice Kanyahamba, I want to take you back to the, the, the entire sequence of some of these events, because one wonders whether there is some coordination or NRM is uncoordinated because literally one would would rather think that the NRM caucus must have met before the law was passed and therefore advised accordingly because even even when they have the attorney general NRM has as a party for example has many lawyers therein so how could they have let the law pass as it was and later alone come back and in fact, even as we speak, the president has invited the Committee on Legal Affairs to also discuss the same, which committee uh, literally also has some opposition members and others. So is NRM working retrospectively? In fact, is Mr. Museven working retrospectively? No. Museven is cornered. You know, recently, the president of Rwanda Kagame hosted Mozi Kene Rugaba on his 49th birthday. We are told that uh, thereafter he will also be hosted by President himself and his father and Honorable. Janet Museven. Presumably it will take place. But as we speak now, that hosting has not taken place. But it will have been over 40, 49 years old. So when is it going to take place? There is a book which has been altered to suit the present position of President Museven when he's not Emina Figezi. But as you see, you can't doctor everything in the books. Is it right, Kiran, the Basita? I mean, I are still there. Is the forward of that book as a Minakigezi is still there. By the way, we have asked those who participated in the first edition where he is held as the famous Minakigezi. Why is his name no longer? In the second edition, I am looking for a copy of that book. The original. Even the original author, Karo mm -hmm. mm -hmm. says he doesn't have the original. <laughs> the author himself. <laughs> the author of that book himself, who sent me a copy autograph, but my copy was taken by one of the directors of Kanyaba Foundation, who is still alive, has not answered. Anybody knows where Honorable Betty Gombe is, 
She's a director of Kanyama Foundation. Please let me have her number. Or contact her and say, Professor Kanyamba wants to talk to you urgently. Mm -hmm. She took my original copy. Uh, it is in the color of NLM party. But the current one, which they are saying, mm. but has been withdrawn altogether, mm. is in green, uh -huh. which is the color of DP. So, in so yesterday I went to all the bookshops. They say the book was withdrawn mm. on the orders of the author. I said, I am the author. I am not with the drone. They said, I said, where is the copy? Whoever came here collected all the copies, copies we were selling, and we don't have them. That is after I have gone to the actual author. Kivan Kavan Anuche. Emuchiga. Who originally wrote the, the, the last one? And then you tell, you ask him, if you didn't write it, can numbers and everybody remember? The Basita Kilan of President M7 are listed in the original book as Basita of Kigezi. How come that has disappeared and you don't have original copy? There are so many. I wish I was a journalist. I would be traveling from office to office, uh, camping at the presidential advisor's office and ask him what happened. Another book which has been withdrawn from the bookshops is the famous one President Museven Master the Seed. Mm. You know if you read the original the copy then you know Museven has been contradicting himself <laughs> all the, the time. So now in order to stop that and particularly in anticipation of questions for the next general election. Someone has withdrawn him. Everywhere, bookshops, individuals, and they have gone to keep quiet where it has gone. So what does this visit, Mohozi's visit and the celebrations of his 49th birthday in Chigadi? So before that, that I visit, I was of the strong you have now had to modify mm. that Mohoz is not being promoted, rather promoted mm. to become president. the president after Museven has served, which I don't want him to serve, but I want him to retire at the end of this presidential election. But I think now shows you that they are arranging that he re retired. He retires after the end of this term. That is in seven, two thousand and twenty-six, mm. and then they are preparing the country which I denied before, but I wanted to admit I was wrong. They are preparing his son, Muhozi Kene Rukaba, who will continue being a general now. So it will be General Muhozi versus the rest. <laughs> After 2026, 20, to serve at least the first years, five years, which they will end 
in 2031. <laughs> then most likely, but this is also doubtful, that's when President Museveni said, ah, now that uh, the candidate is my son, Muhozi, I can retire now. So he will have led Uganda for 45 years? That's right. And then gave us the flag to the, father, to the son? Now, today we don't talk about rude. Mm. Misrued. <laughs> he will have misrued for Uganda. For 45 years. For no, for 35 years. 45. Yeah, because the first 10, he, he was a good up. president. Okay. He became, it became a misrule when he seized power by bribing members of parliament I mean. to remove both term and the age limits. Okay, our viewers, we are with Justice Kanyahamba, we're trying to dissect a few uh, issues here and there. In that very uh, angle, I should also maybe forward this to you. Previously, when Dr. Wesley returned, he held a press conference uh, in, in Kampala at his office. But one of the most outstanding statements were, was that he's not interested in uh, any position. What he's interested in is ensuring that Uganda gets freedom or get rid of the NRM. And he's kept his word. And he's trying to keep his word. Don't you think, uh, uh, is it too early for him to say he's not interested in any position, that even when the government, this regime is pushed away, he's not interested in any leadership position? Is he being honest? Is it a, a fair move for him to declare so? Well, I admire Chisa Vesige. He's a fair Munyakigizian, but uh, I support him for his policies and the stand on the governance in this country. I wish now that he changes his mind and declares that looking at all circumstances mm. that have been have occurred in Uganda, he now declares to be a presidential candidate for the first time. A former president of West Africa stood five times consistently is it, is it Abdullah Wadi? What do you think of Senegal? I think he was that, yes. Of Senegal. Until he won. Mm. And we don't do, hear any chaos in that country since he won. I don't know whether he's still alive. Mm. He was an old man. She's a BCJ. I believe he's in his 60s or 70s. He's 67, I think he made 67 yes. on Saturday. Yes. At one time, one of the presidential candidates disclosed unfairly that we should not vote Chisa Besiji president because he's suffering from a fatal disease. It turned out not to be true, and Chisa Besiji is capable of ruling Uganda for as long as he wishes, like Museven, for another 40 years. Mm -hmm. Many people who were diagnosed or were suffering that same disease are still alive, even though their condition was discovered longer before Chisa BCJ came on the scene. So I don't see why I have elsewhere described the impossibility 
of the other candidate ever be becoming president for different reasons. So at the moment, the only two people who remain presidential advisors were the presidential uh, candidates are President Museven and his son. General Mozin, Kenya Rukawa. But I have put obstacles to all of them, which are very difficult to overcome, both of them. I have looked at the obstacles facing other potential candidates, such as Amriyat, the current leader of FDC. Uh, which are Muzi. CP. Uh -huh. And Mao. DP. And in my opinion, they will never make it to the presidency. Mao has a chance if President Museveni and Mozi and all the DP and other supporters of Nobody, nobody like me who support him fall in line with his presidency. But without us, he will never make it to the presidency. Not even I'm seven, not even if I'm seven nominates him. So, at the moment, Ugandans, our friends, the Kenyans, Tanzanians, you have only two potential candidates. One has declared himself, that is, Jimmy Mosey. And the younger people of the northern region, going by their leader's statement, they also support Mozi mm. to be president in 2000 Six. and the C26. The mistake that Mozi made and the mistake is strongly supporter The president of Rwanda made for not towing Museveni's line will stop Mozi from ascending to the presidency of Uganda. Therefore, Ugandans, in my opinion, there is only one candidate who will win the next general election. That is President Yuri Kagute Museveni. But my advice is that he should retire after this term which also ends in 226. Thank you. <laughs> OK. Um, in our remaining minutes, I will ask you, uh, now we're crossing back to your area of expertise and, uh, and experience. We have, I do not know whether you, you followed the, the murder case of uh, this police officer by the names of Chirumira. Yes, sometime. yes I did. And yesterday, one of the suspects, rather, was also acquitted after this long. And now the question is put to you on when does your, your, your arm as, as judiciary, for example, but I think it's widen it to the justice, law and order sector, where the DPP belongs. 
when are these prosecutors held accountable for mismanaging cases? Because why would you sanction a file whose evidence you know that it is as light and dilute as water? And this person or these other people are kept in jail for this long? And of course, judiciary comes and says, no, these people are innocent. When are the prosecutors held accountable? There is one thing that we humans admit doing if we are honest with ourselves, for which we cannot be personally liable, that we make mistakes. So if I assume that uh, Chimera was guilty. He's a, yeah, he's a murder suspect. Yeah, we couldn't do that. In our country, we can't say somebody is guilty unless he's so proved by a court of competent jurisdiction mm -hmm. based on credible evidence. Mm -hmm. That has never happened in the case of Chimera. Even but uh, the president of Uganda, not nobody. We have strong beliefs that so and so may have committed so and so. That so and so is the one who killed so and so. But they are all speculations. The only sure way in a free and a fair Uganda to ensure that somebody is liable is to have the case tried by a court of competent jurisdiction may be assisted by assessors and they all agree that uh, Kawola was guilty because we have another rule in our country which says nobody can be pronounced guilty unless proved so by a court of jurisdiction, a court of jurisdiction on credible evidence. We have suspicion, yes. Kawaya was accused of killing a policeman, yes, but we have never proved that case. For this long, this person is in jail. That is another issue uh, where an accused person has been staying in the jail for a long time. The courts don't take initiative themselves. But the prosecutor, in this case DPP, or any person who believes in human rights, can apply to court that such a person be released, become free, with or without bail, until the case is finished. This means that such a respect is free until eventually he or she is proved guilty. So the presumption of innocence supersedes the suspicion that the one is guilty of a crime. When you keep these principles, you can't make a mistake, nor can it be unfair to anyone. A story was called about a week ago. There is somebody who was jailed for murder and over a long time he has now proved that he is innocent. 
you may compensate him with all the money, the money he deserves. But you can never co time. compensate time. him for the time he has spent in jail. In jail. So for me, I wish the prosecutors would do a in making people free than uh, in retaining them in the jail when there is no credible evidence. Okay. Mm. Our viewers, we are, we are getting to the end of the show. I'll ask just the Kenyahamba to, because now you have already made your, you have already suggested, I, maybe this could be my last question that you can summarize in a, like two or so minutes. There was a law that was passed, the law against, uh, against torture. That if you are a police officer and you, you, you know, you arrest someone and have them tortured, you are liable. So yes. someone can sue you as an individual, not the attorney general. That's right. Don't you think in your view, given your expertise in legal related matters, that we should have more or less the same law? Maybe this could tame the misconduct and, uh, and professionalism of the DPP's chambers. Especially like you have had this... Let me make two statements very clear. Mm. You can be detained temporarily mm. in accordance with the law mm. on suspicion yeah, that, you committed, that you committed a crime. That is allowed in the law. Yeah. But you can be, never be tortured whatsoever. Yeah, if you are the worst crime, or even if you have confessed, Torture is prohibited forever. Mm. So let's remove torture mm. from this. It's but good. as you know, a Mr. Wabamuno, Wabamuno Alex, who is doing exams at Makere now, and I challenge the right of the police or anyone to affect their right to appeal for bail if they charged with any serious crime, including murder. So the right to bail is absolute, not for bail. Which is attorney general confused. There is no right to bail. But, right to but there is a right to apply for bail. That one is absolute. And Wabamuno and I were approved last week by the Court of Appeal when they granted ministers, ministers suspected of theft bail pending the apply. Mm. They could have said we agree with him seven before he was drew mm. that the bail is absolute. Mm. They would have then refused the bail mm. for those who are choose today, the ministers who we are granted bail in accordance with the submissions of Mr. Muno and the Kanyama. And not in accordance with the judgment of the Constitutional Court alleging that the President Museveni had won the petition and therefore restored the powers of the police to detain people without trial. The judgment in this case of the High Court has become most important in the laws of Uganda. It reaffirms 
كان يهمز position and the world of mission and rejects not a Muslim, Muslim we withdrew from the castle a long time ago. But the judgment of the constitutional court by Monica Mugeni is the best it's okay. Uh, the judge from Kabale, the judge from Kabale, and in Gundan Tende, that not only, oh, and the chief judge of Uganda, they were together, they are together. But, in 71, because when they said that, he had already conceded, conceded, and drew, withdrew from the case. And the judge of the High Court, I don't know who it is, he should be congratulated. He ignored the judgment of the Constitutional Court. And they said, in accordance with submissions of Professor Kanyamba and his colleague, Wawa Muno, we hold, we grant bail to, to this man. They never even mentioned Museveni or the judgment. Okay. Why can't Ugandans be clever? I wish Daniel, you had the power to say you the constitutional court. The judge has been congratulated by Norman Wavamuno and the Kenyamba. What do you say about your false judgment, which the law society has described as unlawful and the Chief Justice of Uganda, Doro Winye, has called as said is mal and void and the case should be finalized by the Supreme Court and we've been asking is is Justice Musoke Elizabeth and the Monica Mugeni who are now judges of the Supreme Court as a result, I think to going to be sitting on the case in which they were the judges <laughs> deciding. Okay. <laughs> well, viewers, we cannot exceed or well, even anything on to today's um, uh, discussion until today, uh, later in the day. We shall host the lead of opposition uh, in Guyanese government, Mr. Aubrey Newton, in our Afro Caribbean link show. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk.